IntelliTug is a one Vatsala co-creation project involving a lot of groups and divisions across Vatsala, from the local Singapore team to the digital team in, in Finland, um, and Voyage Solutions businesses in particular, such as Guidance Marine in the UK, um, the Dynamic Positioning Division in California, Transas uh, in, in St. Petersburg. And it's, it's really an evidence-based and user-centric um, systems design project, which is going to demonstrate some really world-breaking and, and new uh, capabilities, in particular with respect to near-field navigation, that's, you know, close quarters maneuvering around the vessel, such as automatic dynamic route planning, anti-collision avoidance, situational awareness, and enhanced um, operator assistance. The key and, and unique feature really is that we control all of the data inputs into the whole solution. We have the whole technology spectrum. We've got decades of experience in making marine-grade position sensors. All of that translates into these new solutions we're developing here. We've got the robotics experience of working with kinematics and, and vessel um, dynamics. We've got the simulator experience as well. We've got the digital twin experience. So all of this come together so that we can go through the layers from sensing, actually detecting something and detecting the right things to the perception um, and making sense of what we have detected, all the way to cognition, understanding what kind of intent the object may have, whether it's a floating log or whether it's a vessel that maybe has some intent and is trying to go somewhere. The smart lab technology is absolutely scalable. Remember, we don't develop, we're not developing a product, a single solution here. We're developing a whole technology suite. It is primarily software, ultimately. The hardware, our industry standard products, and we're using its output or their output to fuse the data together to achieve this sort of capability. But ultimately, that software can run on any kind of embodiment, on any kind of bridge system, any kind of embedded system, whatever the actual application ultimately requires. So it'll be immediately transferable to other vessel types, like smaller ferries, other passenger crafts, um, offshore work boats, those kind of, any sort of boat with a similar shape and dimension. We've got decades of experience of making safe and secure products. So for a start, we're good engineers. We've got all of the engineering processes and controls of making safe products. But of course, I see where the question comes from because there's a wider dimension to it. And that simply means is from the, from the start, we are developing, we're embedding the whole testing into the design process. So whether we're doing virtual testing just on the computer and with some model based, whether we're using um, advanced regression testing, this whole project is evidence-based. We've been collecting data and we're continuing to collect data in real time from vessels in the situation. And all of this data forms the basis against which we can test. So with every single day passing, we're creating more evidence of how our systems and algorithms are performing and we can test them. Whenever we make a change, we've got all the test models in place to go back to it. So using modern software design techniques really, coupled with an evidence-based design approach where we're using real data from real sensors in the real environment as opposed to just simulating it. We really cover the whole mix. So before we even go out on a vessel and try it out for real, we will have a very, very high level of confidence that what we have developed is safe. It is not about more screens. It is not about more buttons. It is not about more gizmos. We're trying to enhance the user here. So what we're doing is we're really doing user-centric design. We've been observing the users. We're following them in their operation. We're trying to understand what it is, how they're doing it is, whatever it is they're doing in situ, in the real life observation. We've done night studies, we've done day studies, and all of that flows into it. We want to help them improve their overall process, not give them another gadget, something else that's distract them. So this user-centric design is a key part of it. And the users are engaged in the process. At all stages, are we showing them results? Are we showing them how the technologies are working? And we will give them opportunity to, to play and experience with the technology, starting in a simulator, starting in a, in a mission simulator, all the way to ultimately you know, experiencing it under supervision on the vessel. Combination actually is the right word. So instead of obsessing about a particular single technology and trying to get it fault-free and perfect with diminishing returns and usually with, with very high cost increases, this is really about bringing an, a number of technology together, fusing them for the ultimate goal. Now, a key cornerstone in that technology mix 
is a world unique product, the RS24, a high definition, high resolution K band or 24 gigahertz near field situational radar. But even that will have failure modes which need to be compensated for. And there we're using you know, marine grade industry standard low light cameras, even thermal cameras, solid state motion reference units, MRUs, and of course GNSS and GPS satellite positioning, as well as high frequency um, local AIS receivers. All of which have got failure modes, but by ensuring we've got robust marine grade core technology and working at the lowest physical layer, we can actually bring all of these technologies together and then enhance with our algorithms to achieve the robust performance we're hoping to get from this project. An unmanned or, or uncrewed vessel is, is a big vision and you can sort of imagine how it has some, some real benefits if you no longer need to cater for a human at all. But that will really come through new ship designs where you can actually shape the, the vessel completely differently an interesting vision to, to keep in mind, the real business opportunity and interest for us are all of the steps in between, all the semi-autonomous uh, applications, whether that's some, some remote control or simply mission autonomy, where vessels can carry out certain missions autonomous, either because that's safer or it's more efficient or we're reducing variability or reducing time, fuel consumption emissions reductions, all of these things are a real benefit and they can be applied to vessels today without new vessels designs by just applying these technologies and I think that is the area where we'll see real commercial advantage, where we see real commercial opportunity, market opportunities, but also ultimately benefits to the user and the operator, but also to society. That these are not just technological ideas which look interesting, but actually these are technologies that really help us develop you know, the smarter and greener and more efficient society.